Talk a little bit about uh, your background for a minute or two, where you grew up, your education, and your experience before joining ESA's Astronaut Corps. Yes, before joining European, uh, the European Astronaut Center and European Astronaut Corps, um, I had a career in material science engineering. So I studied in several European um, universities in Germany, in France, in Spain, also a year in the UK at the University of Leeds. I had also internship in, uh, in uh, Latin America, in Argentina and in South Korea. And um, then I worked afterwards in the development in R&D of medical disposables. Uh, mainly I developed blood filters for dialysis. So, and um, I think these are like, like some of these topics are actually the research areas that we have on the International Space Station. So we have a lot of material science on the space station. We have several furnaces, but we also work in the uh, domain of life sciences. And uh, so that's why I think like um, I bring in a lot of like expert knowledge to run a lot of these experiments that we have on the space station. Well, that launches right into my next question. Given your background and interests, uh, are there any specific uh, fields or experiments that you're most excited about working with? Yeah, so definitely I like the metals and melting metals. Um, so we have the uh, electromagnetic levitating furnace uh, in, in the European module where we can uh, heat up metal samples, have them floating, so no contact with uh, any... Uh, let me say any boundaries where we could have artifacts then we can like heat them up see the viscosity measure all the different parameters undercool them and all these parameters we only can gain in zero gravity and then we can feed it into computer simulations um, which are applicable for like um, like applications on the ground when you for example want to produce a new car engine or a turbine plate for um, in a jet engine like a plane um so that is a lot of like it's it's not what people perceive as okay that's a complete breakthrough but it gives you a lot of extremely valuable data and in all these um, metal experiments that we run on the space station i was so impressed to see that they are booked out for years so when i tried to bring in um, my home university said like you need to do more research they like contacted um, the hardware owners and they're like, okay, for the next three, four years, that's already completely booked. And it's it's highly successful uh, what we're doing in, in the field of material science on the space station. I'm also looking into life science experiments and um, also combining life sciences with artificial intelligence. Um, for example, we see that a lot in the human body changes um, we have also eye problems and one of the devices that we're flying now is like having um, like taking images video images of the eye um, and applying artificial intelligence for the image analysis and um, crown testing has proven that with such a quite simple setup um, like an iPhone for example um, and a lens that we put on there and the right software, you can achieve like almost better uh, results than a specialist, an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor can do um, just by looking into your eye. So we want to test this in space. And if this technology proves uh, to be uh, like to be performing as well as we hope, then you can even apply it in countries where you don't have enough budget to uh, buy all the uh, like the, the, the hardware, the expensive equipment um, that usually like um, a clinic has. So um, there's a lot in between between material sciences up to um, life sciences. We have combustion experiments um, in German. My name, my last name, Mora, means bricklayer. And as a bricklayer, you also should do uh, um, like something with construction. And so I will have an experiment with concrete. Uh, we will mix some cement on the space station and see how it hardens. Um, and that's not just because of my name, that's just a coincidence. It actually contributes a lot of science because even after using concrete for centuries, um, scientists still have fundamental questions in like how actually performs the hardening of this liquid turning into such a rock solid material. 
and then solidifying it in zero gravity might uh, result in completely different properties. So uh, there's a wide spectrum of very interesting experiments that we're running in space. That's, that's fascinating. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be a lot of fun for you uh, to perform those experiments. Uh, are, are you going to be able to do any spacewalks on this mission or is it to be determined? <clears throat> it's on one side to be determined on the US side, um, but on the Russian side, we have the new European robotic arm on, on the MLM, which just uh, arrived on the station a few months ago. And um, so I'm trained to perform a spacewalk in a Russian Orland spacesuit and to help together with a cosmonaut to uh, um, activate the European robotic arm. It was transported up there and now we need to uh, remove a transport fixture and also install the video cameras, which were not installed during the transport, but which were flown up on the inside of MLM and doing some checkouts. And so that hopefully takes place at the very end of my mission, uh, in the April time, uh, time frame. And so, yes, I'm very much looking forward to that one as well. It'll be a highlight of the mission for me. I'm, I'm sure it will. Um, I had a question also about uh, your training experience with SpaceX. Uh, as a as a non-U.S. citizen, are there any restrictions, um, like due to ITAR, about what data SpaceX can share with you or what you can, uh, you know, have access to during training, or is it pretty similar to your U.S. crewmates? Uh, there are restrictions, um, and it is, as you said, like related to ITAR, and the training is uh, on a need-to-know basis. So uh, a commander and a and the pilot receive more training than somebody who's a mission specialist. What, what types of things as a mission specialist uh, are, are you doing in Crew Dragon on the way up and down? So as a mission specialist, um, basically I need to be able to handle my spacesuit and myself and uh, I'm not flying the vehicle, obviously, that is uh, fully in charge of commander and the pilot. But in emergency situations, um, we as a crew need to be fully aware what everyone needs to do. So my commander and my pilot rely on me knowing exactly uh, what to do. And once we land in the water, um, Kayla and me, we are the, boss, the mission specialist, um, will take care of emergency situations. So in case we have a cabin fire, we get out of the seats and fight the fire while our commander continues to fly the spacecraft. Also, when landing um, in the sea, in the ocean, Kayla and I will take care of the life raft, um, yeah, inflate it on the outside, just make sure that our second raft or craft is ready for the pilot and the commander. And so we take care of the emergency situations. I wanted to ask you your thoughts on the name Endurance for the spacecraft. Uh, what, what does that name mean to you? Well, I mean, it's uh, Raj explained it very well this morning. It has a lot of meanings, and especially in times of COVID, um, you need to have endurance um, to get over a lot of obstacles that you already, like becoming an astronaut flying to space is difficult. But uh, combined with a global pandemic, um, also like the commercial program, um, it's not easy to arrive that quickly um, at such a point where we are now that a commercial company within like one and a half years has flown so many astronauts to space. Um, so you definitely need to have a um, lot of endurance and, and like capable teams. Last question, if I may, just briefly, uh, are you still taking Chinese lessons for a potential flight on the Chinese space station? At the moment, I fully concentrate uh, on this space flight mission. And uh, we will see what the European Space Agency has as plans for for us European astronauts. Um, I'm definitely willing to continue cooperating with other partners if that is uh, what my space agency wants to do. All right. Thank you and best of luck on your mission.